Good morning, good afternoon or good evening. This is your IT Explained and in this video we're going to be covering off on route maps. Specifically we're going to be going through troubleshoot route map for any routing protocol from the official Cisco examination topics of the current ANASI exam being 300-410. So, getting straight into it, what is a route map? It's basically just a way to control the traffic that flows through your network or a device. So on screen we just have an example of the show command for showing a route map. And in this display we have a route map called RM1 and it is permitting on sequence 10 and then there is a match clause and a set clause. So it looks to find something and then performs a function based on those matches. It can be a little bit overwhelming if this is the first time you've seen it, but we'll be going back and covering the foundations once you just had a brief overview of what it looks like. So on this screen, the top image is just what we saw on the previous screen, but we're going to expand a little bit further on the bottom image because a, the route map example that we have here on the top is referring to an access list called access list 10. So when you're matching an IP address, the number refers to an ACL. So the number on the end refers to an ACL in the match command. So here, route map RM1 at sequence 10 is permitting any IP address that matches whatever is specified in access list 10. So now we have to show access lists to see what our access list 10 is actually um, set to match, and it is uh, permitting on line 10 the specific host address of 10.10.91.9 we can see here it's got 37 matches on the ACL which um, matches up to the amount of packets that have been matched via this route map so that's what we'd probably expect to see and then once it's matched that particular host it then performs the function so we're setting the next hop IP address to this for any of the traffic that comes from this host. It's important to note that when you are specifying the route map, when you're defining it, that if you want to instead use a prefix list instead of an ACL, you must type the command, the word prefix list first. If you just type in the name of your prefix list as a word uh, under the match command, so match IP address, and then you put in the, the name of your prefix list, the device is going to look for an ACL that matches that, an IP access list name. So first type in prefix list and then the name of your prefix list if that's what you want to use. So now that you've seen the basics, uh, a bit of an overview of what a route map actually looks like, we're going to break it down into exactly what is contained within a route map. So there's four main components you need to be aware of. The first one is the sequence number. So much like an access control list, it has sequences that it will iterate through, starting at sequence 10 being the default and then typically will increment by 10. But you can specify sequence 15, 5, 25 if you'd like as well. Then there is the processing action. Again, like an ACL, this is where you choose to either permit or deny on the route map. Following that, you then specify what you're looking for, the match criteria. So what is this sequence in the route map actually looking for? So based on a given sequence, what are we looking to match against? And then based on what we have matched, the last component is the action. So what are we going to do with these matches? What are we going to do with whatever has been matched? What uh, function do we want the route map to perform? So now we just have a little bit of an example of a definition of a route map here. So in the configure terminal, you would type route map, a route map name, and then whether you're going to permit or deny, and the sequence number. So this is the route map name. This is the processing action. This is the sequence number. And then we go into the match criteria and the action being the set command. So in this example, we're matching an, the IP address from prefix list called my prefix list. And for anything that does match, we're setting the metric to 3000. 
So now we're just going to go through an example of a, a full route map with multiple sequences. So starting at sequence 10, we have my route map permitting on sequence 10 matching the IP address from my ACL and my other ACL. Sorry, not and. If you understand programming basics and booleans, it's an or function. So if this is true or this is true, then do this. Okay, so if there is a network that is in this or in this one, we're going to set the weight to 200. Now setting the weight, this is a BGP uh, specific command, so we're going to set the BGP weight of that route to 200 for anything that matches any of, any of these. So be aware you can specify multiple ACLs just by adding extra names on the end. Now continuing on, if you want to add another sequence, you just use the same command, route map, my route map, and then permit sequence 20. Now we're matching an IP address against a prefix list called my prefix list. And for anything that matches, we're setting the metric to 3000. Now we've already gone through this, but now we have this extra command here called continue. And this is where we need to get a better understanding of how route maps are processed. So the way a route map works is much like a function in a programming language, how it starts at one sequence and works its way down until it finds what it's looking for. So in this example, if we matched a network from my ACL or my ACL, other ACL, it would perform this, it would set the weight to 200 and then it would break out of the route map and it would not do this, it would not check this, it would just then go about its uh, routing on the device. But if it fails, so if it doesn't match anything here, so if the network that we are currently checking does not reside in my ACL or my other ACL, then it will not do this and it moves to the next sequence in the route map. So it moves to sequence 20. So now it's going to check the prefix list, my prefix list, to see if that network exists in here. If it does, it sets the metric to 3000 and then it would typically break out of the route map. But using the continue command here, you are specifying that I if this does match, I don't want you to break out and, and uh, ignore the rest of the sequences. I want you to still run through the next sequence. So if this is true, if it does match, I still want you to move on to this next sequence. So if that's something you want to do, remember you have to use continue. If you don't specify continue, it will, once it matches, leave the route map. So in this example, whether or not this matches in sequence 20, if we are using sequence 20, it's going to use sequence 30 regardless. So if it fails to match, it's going to do what a route map normally does and move to the next sequence. But if it does match, because we specified continue, it will move to the next sequence as well. Now in sequence 30, we are again permitting and we're matching IP address 15. Now because it's just a number here, what it's going to look for is an access list that is numbered a 15. Now for any network that matches in here, we're going to set a tag on that traffic to 99. Now this can be handy when we are using complex redistribution um, between many different protocols in a complex network because you can get routing loops and setting tags on the traffic will allow you to then block certain traffic at different areas to control uh, the network flow and to prevent routing loops. Lastly, we have this route map, my route map deny sequence 40. And then there are no match or set statements to follow. Now the funny thing about this is whether or not you type this in, it's going to make no difference because this is the implicit behavior of a route map. So once it's gone through all of the sequences, the default behavior is to then anything else that hasn't matched. So if it isn't, if it isn't in these ACLs, it isn't in this prefix list, and it isn't in this ACL, then the default behavior of the route map is to deny. So whether you put this in or not, it makes no difference. What 
is important to note is that if we change this to permit, so route map, my route map permit 40, you can leave this blank. You don't have to put in a match or a set tag. But the way that a route map behaves is the match command, if not specified, defaults to match all prefixes. Okay? It matches all prefixes by default once you've specified a sequence. So if you did route map, my route map permit 40, the default behavior would be to permit all other networks. So if it hasn't matched this or this or this, and you did route map, my route map permit 40, then it would just pass the traffic through as normal. So it's important to remember that. If you want to just pass any traffic that hasn't matched here, you just put in a final command at the end uh, of your sequences to just route map, your route map, permit, and then the sequence number. The last thing to cover off on is that you need to actually associate the route map. So it's all well and good that we've dis decided to define the route map associate with ACLs and prefixes, but you need to tell it where this route map is going to be used. So we have two options. You can either use an interface or a protocol. The most common use for the route map is to associate it with a routing protocol. So here is an example. In the OSPF definition, OSPF process one, if you want to associate it with a route map, you'd use the command distribute list, route map, the name of your route map, and then we're going to, in this example, say in. So any traffic passing into OSPF, we want to run through the route map. So this is quite handy when you start to go through route redistribution and you're trying to control traffic in complex networks that use multiple routing protocols. It's definitely a considerable part of the ANASI um, examination topics that you want to wrap your head around. So that concludes the theory behind the route maps. In the following video, we will go through a lab demonstration of how you can set up and configure and utilize route maps in a practical sense. So thanks for watching. If you have any comments, then feel free to drop them below and we'll see how we go to getting around to all of them. Otherwise, please just leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And of course, feel free to subscribe if you want to see more content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.